So the talk is on um, Apache website generation with Pelican. And I'm Dave Fisher. And I'm an ASF member. I'm the VP of Apache Petri. Uh, I'm a PMC member of a number of PMCs. Um, this is my um, Apache address, um, wave at apache.org. And if you want to see all um, the different uh, PMCs I'm involved with, it's available from Whimsy roster uh, here. Oops. Oops. Sorry, got a little head there. So um, the um, uh, the pr I was involved in a project um, for Infra to um, replace the Apache CMS, which is a legacy system. Um, you know, I had um, done a OpenOffice.org into the CMS ten years ago, uh, and also uh, moved it out of that. <clears throat> so we had some choices, um, but um, the um, goal was to do something that was um, supportable by the Apache infrastructure staff and um, had to be in Python. And uh, GitHub flavored Markdown was preferred as well. Um, the advantage there is that then you um, can edit uh, your pages in GitHub and you pretty much are gonna you know, see the content changes um, at, you know, the way you want them immediately. Um, we also need to do some templating because some websites, particularly the Apache website, um, have uh, they display data that's um, brought in um, uh, periodically. Um, so we, you know you need to be able to get that data onto the page. Um, so uh, I'll talk more about that later. So you know for the improvements, you know no more Perl. Um, we want to keep the themes simple and minimal and keep them separate from the content. Uh, and uh, one of the issues we had with the CMS uh, on the website is that uh, there was a, a redesign happening and the old system had, you know, effectively two modes, staging and production. And everything that went to production had to go through staging. So um, uh, the um, a person was working on a redesign and had it sort of halfway there and under evaluation. And then someone else went and pressed the publish button and that messed up the site. And they basically made it very hard to complete the redesign. Everything had to be rolled back and everything. So and one of our improvements is that um, you can have multiple feature branches and they all stage to separate um, domains. Um, and then also we have a new tool called ASF YAML. We wanted to be able to support Pelican builds from within that. So um, we have data models as well. So basically, you know, what you either know, it depends on what you need to do with the site. Um, for content creation, it's pretty much just your basic uh, markdown or a little bit of EZT, which is a really simplistic, um, simple templating uh, language. Uh, and, uh, you know, you might have to know some HTML um, if you have some content that doesn't fit within Markdown. And also for theme creation, all your typical um, web framework skills can come into play. Uh, if you're going to do the plugins or build, you know, you're going to need to know Python and maybe a little bit of Docker if you want to do it. Uh, on your own, on your machine, as opposed to using the the um, the GitHub and build directly, uh, build bots directly. Uh, that's an option. Um, at the end, we'll, I'll show um, a local Docker build. Uh, for the setup and data, we're using YAML, JSON, and XML. So in, in Pelican, uh, which is a completely open source project, uh, you go through um, these phases. Actually, their, their signal model is a little bit larger than this. Uh, there's a few more steps that you can inject um, uh, plugins at, but for our purposes, essentially, they 
break boil down to the following. Um, you have your settings file, which basically specifies your content tree, what you're including, what you're excluding, what's static, um, you know, that kind of thing. You're going to specify what plugins you're going to use. You're going to specify um, the theme and where the theme is in your tree. Um, then uh, once the settings are going, it starts up. And um, at startup, uh, we have a couple plugins. Um, one is to run scripts, which if I have time, I'll get to. Uh, but the mo important one is the data model. Uh, then things are started up. Pelican collects the files um, and it knows what a static file is. And then for uh, non-static files, uh, it has readers. And we have two readers. Uh, one is for the uh, GitHub flavored markup. And those are typically MD files. And then uh, we have uh, EZT enhanced uh, GFM files, which we call EZMD files. And uh, that was a separate reader class for that, which is actually, I'll show you a little bit later. It's a subclass of the GFM uh, reader. Uh, we also um, had some important legacy features uh, that we wanted to continue using uh, when we got to the content processing. So the readers will actually, uh, this is different from uh, Markdown, the readers will um, uh, read the data, extract the metadata, uh, and um, then uh, convert it to uh, HTML. So then you're passing you know, the HTML of the content, and then you can do some things with it. So in the content phase, we do a number of things, which uh, is called Gen ID for historical reasons. Uh, but essentially, um, we had a custom plugin called Element ID that allowed annotations of, um, of the class and also annotations of um, uh, permalinks, uh, usually on onto headings, but not always. So, and we also you know, in addition, there's some features uh, to take a heading and make a permanent link to it. And uh, that uh, we all want to make sure that um, generated the same permalink that our old um, markdown extension produced in um, uh, the Apache CMS. So, uh, uh, I will, I'll show that in a little bit too. Um, and then once that's all done, there's something called finalization. And I recently added an indexing feature that can create an index page from all the finalized, from all the content that was created and that's available in an internal tree in Pelican. And also uh, there's um, a need uh, and some sites have a Javadoc directory. Uh, and so there's can be handy to just copy that static HTML without processing it uh, into another point. Because if you, you know, avoid processing it in Pelican, even if it's static, uh, you're going to save some time. Um, and then the last thing it does is it takes the HTML content and puts it through the theme. Which is which are Jinja templated based. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to kind of start. Uh, I'm going to jump around on this a little bit uh, here uh, because um, I think it's important to to deal with the simple things first. So for themes, um, I'm going to use the WW site theme and just show that to you. Um, so essentially, it's a, a piece of HTML, pretty much copied from the old system. And then there's some Jinja, uh, a Jinja include here of some style information. 
uh, and then all of our headers, all of our headings and stuff. So there's there's one main template base. And then here's where the um, content is injected. For the Apache site, the home page has um, a slightly different layout than the rest, but other than that, it's um, and it's all based on this div container being there or not. So you know, here's the here's the website on the home page, right? And if you click onto, you know, another page, you see it changes up, it changed it up a little bit. That's uh, based on that container. Um, the other thing you might notice, there's all these numbers and stuff. So um, this page is going, I'll show you a little bit, but this is an easy MD page. Um, so that's the base. And then there um, are some derivations. So we extend the base and we just um, uh, are basically pulling the, the page content into that block. Um, so everything is a page pretty much from the template. Um, so we're, we're overriding. Pelican has a, a mode. Pelican has a mode where there's many different kinds of templates and it has a, a default. And then, um, so I'm just saying I'm overriding the page template with, with our thing extending base. Um, and uh, the site index, um, is kind of similar, except um, this this variable is something computed by a plugin and just inserted. So it's a it's extra HTML that differs from uh, what Pelican provides in this page dot content. And then style. This um, if if people have ever looked at our old CMS output. Uh, these are items uh, for style for our um, our permalinks. So uh, what the CMS uh, did was it just insert them at the first place. Um, they occurred within the content. Uh, instead, we're making sure they're in by um, inserting them either into our CSS file itself or into the um, the base.html. Um, okay. Click happy. Okay. Um, so I went, I covered, you know, an example of the theme. So the theme can be anything you want. I, I migrated a number of sites and basically I took the existing theme and uh, modified it to you know, slightly uh, to fit Pelican. Um, but, you know, you could see that you could do this in almost anything. Oh, I've got a little issue here. Anyway, we've got some documentation on the infra site uh, about this as well. There's some examples. Um, but I think the, be the best choice is to look at these things as any, you know, from the actual sites we have as examples. And we have a template site as well. Um, there's um, documentation on themes from Pelican. We have really good documentation. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, and there's also, a, if you're interested in one of these, you know, public themes, they've got a whole library of themes. They also, here's, here's the code for the static for Pelican. So, if, you know, if you can examine this and figure out, you know, what you want to do. There's also a collection of plugins uh, that you can uh, add to your project. So the theming is nice, straightforward, and simple. Um, okay, now we're going to get into um, uh, GitHub flavored Markdown slash GFM. 
Um, so for this, um, you know, we've we've got a page that that has a lot of information, um, and you know, it's a little bit different from our old Markdown in the sense that um, uh, you know GitHub is based on common uh, Mark. Uh, it uh, has certain rules about the HTML. When you switch from HTML mode to to Markdown mode, you've got you may have to add a blank line. You know, you've got to watch out for you know you have to start your HTML in the first four characters, or it's going to think it's a, a block. Uh, you know uh, things like that. Um, so there's a few. There's like different different pieces you can look at here. Um, one of the things GitHub has is just an exhaustive uh, specification and examples. So that's really handy for your content. Um, they also have, you know, um, this item here, which is another way to look at syntax. So all this stuff is, you know, very handy. And for the most part, you're you're going to get um, what um, it's going to be. What you see is what you get. So this is uh, aside from some of our annotations. Um, so this is what the page is, and then if we go here. And then you see this page pretty much looks oh. sorry. I've, I've lost the, um, which one this is, or if I can find it this way. So you can see when you're, when you're editing and looking at it, it looks like the page. This is a table of contents that was inserted, but here, you know, our, our permalink style is a little different, but you can see that we have this one and it met, met the other item. Uh, common mark is the version is of course it's available here. Um, uh, it's all open source as well. Okay, so we should talk about the Gen ID plugin that we have that uh, does a number of things. One of the things that Common Mark has uh, and the GFM is set up is it um, will take some un quote unquote unsafe um, HTML tags and comment them out by changing the the left bracket into an ampersand LT semicolon. So, um, and that, you know, obviously when you're on a site like uh, GitHub, you don't want, um, you know, people, anyone in the world to create certain things which might cause, um, you know, some security issues, et cetera. But on our pages, we do, uh, need to use iframe and script and style. We, we've got some things that uh, really depend on that. Uh, for example, we've got um, uh, our trillions and trillions uh, video on the home page, which is in an iframe. So um, this plugin will um, uh, fix these things. Uh, we do have the ability to do some simple metadata expansion uh, from our data models on the page. 
we're doing our element ID uh, expansions to, to set up anchors and, um, and classes. And then we also have some automation to add permalinks to headings, even if they don't have a, an anchor tag set up. So, and we're, we're doing that with the same uh, algorithm that we used before. Um, the tables that are created uh, out of common mark uh, may not have the, the class we expect, so we have a fix up. Uh, and then we need to, you know, make, we have some pages with table of contents. So here's the, here's the um, rather long, um, you know, it has, it has some settings to decide what you want to do, you know, what your headings are. Um, you know, it's got the fix ups on the scripts and stuff. And there was some, also some um, um, fix up for EZT stuff. Um, and just a, a lot of different things. The, the logic, of course, is at the bottom. Um, uh, here's, here's how it decides, you know, what level it's registering for which Pelican signal. Um, and then here it's, it's being called. And then it does the generate ID, which um, you know, make sure you're not in static content. Um, you get the make sure you have the settings, and then you do, um, you know, you just do a number of things here. So you know, like fix up the HTML. So then it calls calls the fix up content. So there's above, above. there's also some hidden things, some things I didn't mention like uh, a breadcrumb generation in case you need that. Um, and uh, metadata expansion, if you're allowing that. Um, you know, so one of the, one of the tools that was really useful here was the, the um, um, uh, beautiful soup. And using beautiful soup, uh, we're able to get all the tags, and then we, you know, we look, we we accumulate them so we know the tags. We make sure they're unique, um, and then we go through and look for elements, and you know, apply the tra that transform. Uh, we do the heading transform, fixing tables, and do table of contents. Um, So all this is available in our infrastructure Pelican um, GitHub. And EZT is something that um, uh, Greg Stein did while he was at Google. And it's used in a lot of places. And it's just a simple um, templating system. Infrastructure is already using it. So So here we're inserting uh, inserting these variables onto the main page so they're easier to update. Um, we our data model uh, can extract the latest Twitter the latest tweet from our our, our from a Twitter feed. Um, so this is just a little thing that it creates the link for that along with the text. Uh, similarly for some blog posts. Uh, 
We've got a featured project section, which does a little loop on three featured projects. Sam similarly with the pod links. Um, and then these are multiple columns of the project listing at the bottom of our page. So like here are the feature projects. Uh, we redo the build every hour uh, that randomly changes the these features. And um, then here are the, the project listings. So that's all all done with data. So you can see that um, you know we've got we've got things set up. So that was our first example here. Another example is um, this page, uh, which is essentially um, a listing of our board members, uh, a listing of officers, and PMCs. So they see there's, there's there's handy forms of doing this. Okay. Um, the template site here has a lot of examples too. Uh, I'm taking a lot of time, so I think I'm going to try to move a little faster. Um, okay. We have a data plugin. So this defines the data. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know people who want to look at the deck later look at the ASF data uh, pi. Uh, but there, there's a definition here. Um, so um, these are some of the counts you saw at the beginning of the page. They're just um, key value pairs, and then there's um, uh, a set of instructions that take this file um, available from Wunzi, which is something that's computed. It's essentially a committee info JSON that has three sections uh, and it creates um, various parts uh, from that JSON um, into um, these different um, items, um, data, data, values so you can see here we, we got here we did a project right and we alphabetized it uh, list of projects and then from that we picked random we took that sequence and picked three random ones and then we um, assigned a logo pattern to help pick the logos for that um, this actually goes and looks in the site and sees if that project has a logo and if it doesn't, then it uses the Apache powered by. Um, and then we make our six columns of project lists with the alphas in there as a sequence that EZT can handle. Similarly for podlings, um, we, we use this particular file uh, out of the projects uh, maintained by Comdev. And um, uh, we have a podlings file, but we don't, we don't really use it uh, yet. Uh, but we needed the random sequence here. And similarly, um, we use the, uh, their default logo if they have one or the incubator logo. Uh, so has some other items like Twitter, we say we want the ASF tweet, the, the most recent one, but you could do any handle there. Um, this, for this case though, we do have to keep a secret. So we keep a secret for that. Um, and then foundation blogs, we're reading different uh, atom feeds. Uh, we have a settings file. Um, the typical Pelican conf is a is a, a settings file more like this, which is kind of complex. What we did 
is we we made it easier by um, uh, taking um, we we have a, a YAML file which goes through an EZT template to create the thing. So here's um, Show you a, a YAML. So this just takes the, you know the the a few site things that you need that we need. Um, a place to specify the the subpath for the theme. Um, some setup stuff. So this is the ASF data plugin. This is the data configuration for it. This is how you can run a script in advance. Um, it could be a Python script, any kind of command line. Basically, you can put one or more command lines in there. Uh, HTTP site uses it for rolling up the vulnerabilities from JSON into HTML. You can set up some ignores so we can have readme.md files in our content tree and not include them in our content output. Um, you know, we might want to ignore some include directories, or if you're going to do a copy a directory out like an the API docs, you need to ignore the API docs as well. Uh, then you have for your gen ID configuration about what parts you want, how deep you want the headings are, do you want to generate permalinks, etc. cetera. Um, Infrastructure Pelican. This is um, this is all the code to run Pelican. Uh, you can see we we got a build common mark. You got a we got the build script. Uh, this is the this is what's run on the build bot or locally. Um, it, depending on the mode, it it does various things. Um, and um, Here's where all the code to all the plugins is. Depending on which one, you may have to specify it or it's automatically done. Okay. So once you've installed Infrastructure Pelican on your computer, uh, you can actually, you know, with a local copy of your site and your content, you can make changes and test them out. So here we are. This is a Docker build. So I built, I built Docker. I'm in the infrastructure Pelican directory, and I've made my Docker file. And then in this one, I've run it. Now, for some reason, in, in this local mode, you can put it in a listening mode, and it seems to want to do things three times for some reason. <clears throat> but that's okay. So I have a file. <clears throat> and here's a, excuse me, <clears throat> here's a page that I've, um, that we have in the site now. Actually, I should do this from here. Okay, so here's the site, right? And here's the board example. I'm here, and let's say I wanted to make this, I want to say that level of heading. So I change that, and look, it, it ran. To ignore that. That's just something that's already copied the files, the, the example copies. And now I'm back here and I refresh and see it's made it smaller. Now, this all uses ASF YAML. And you can see there's the Pelican section and this auto build slash preview star and stuff on both here and staging is what lets you um, build feature branches and work on them. 
and then it does a few of these things. Now, I think the theme may be redundant, but we can talk about that later. And um, minimum page count is a nice thing that we that uh, I had um, that we added with minimum page count. If for some reason your build breaks and you only get you get less than your minimum number of pages, it will abort instead of like making your site an empty site. So it's a little fail safe built in here. Um, and then here's an example of a build bot. So this, this was a build that was done seven hours ago, but you can see, you know, if you need to go look what happened, here it is. The whole run. So it's a very, very handy system. It's, it's good to use. We've used for a number of sites. Um, and uh, let's see here. There, there's examples here and, and here. One thing to think about is that we've got Like for example, I mentioned logos and stuff. Well, logos actually exist on another server. So, you know, these things can be easily set up even in here. It's all, all very easy. Um, here on, um, on um, HTTPD site, um, we have, You have a script that rolls up the vulnerabilities. So it's just run just like that. Um, Open JPA site, they have um, two branches that have their old documentation. Um, they have something like 70, 80,000 files. You don't want to run that many files through Pelican. Um, it take a long time. It's like an 11 minute build. So, you know, it's all, um, and it was even long, even if I copied. So um, we just made separate branches. And what's neat on these branches, you can see ASF YAML has a, a ability to publish subdirectories of your site, as long as they're as long as they aren't there. This works. There, this is a temp. The, this um, template site uh, is a bunch of ex uh, examples and stuff. So it's really more of an example site than a template site. Um, Sab has correctly pointed that out in one of these issues. Um, so, but I think the examples are important too. So what we might do is branch it so that um, you can have the simple template site that you can use uh, that should give you everything you need. If you use the, the framework and base.html that's here um, and modify it, then you should pass the project websites check, for example. Um, well, I think I'm, I'm about at time. So I, um, I'll open up for questions in, the, in either chat or Q&A. Any questions, please type them in. Well, if there are no questions, um, please um, enjoy the rest of ApacheCon and have a, a, a great rest of your day.